Bob, Shanali there was just talking about the kind of line that exists between where higher rates or are a good thing for banks because it means more net interest income and the line where higher rates are actually a bad thing because it could slow down the economy and therefore loan growth, for example. How far away are we from that line? So I think it, when, when you look across the uh, bank earnings, Kelly, I think it's a it's two tails. In the core, core banking business of taking deposits and making loans, I think there's an awful lot of headwinds. I think there's uh, the costs uh, of running a bank just with the tightness in, in the labor markets. The competition with uh, technology monolines, and uh, um, you know, also the the costs of revamping the technology in, in the digital economy. So I think there's an awful lot of headwinds, and I think that core banking business feels a lot more like a utility. Um, I think it has for a while, and I think that's increasing. Certainly, the positive is higher rates uh, will be a positive. I think on the other side, those banks, and you certainly saw it with Bank of America, those banks with trading operations. If you were in fixed income currencies and commodities and really even secondary equities, this volatility, rising interest rates, a little bit more uncertainty, what a great environment mm. for, for a trading operation. So I think I think that's the way I'd look at it slightly differently, that core uh, the core banking business versus the trading business. Yeah, and to your point on trading, Bank of America seeing zero days of trading losses in the entire quarter. I think that was one of the more remarkable stats that came out uh, this morning. So if you have your investment banking side doing quite well, the consumer side is the question. Is that why we have seen banks underperforming to such a large degree, even in the face of higher yields? Yeah, for sure. And I think it's that core banking business. So the more it's a Goldman Sachs or a Morgan Stanley or B of A with, with the Merrill Lynch operation in there or Barclays Capital within Barclays, the more you have a wealth business, uh, an asset management business, a trading business, the better you're going to look. The more you're a core bank. And, you know, look what else happened uh, just last week. You saw a capital group from the West Coast selling very large stakes in European banks where these European banks have a price to book right now below, um, you know, 50%. So compare and contrast that to kind of the utility look of, of kind of the U.S. banks. They're outperforming the Europeans, but mm -hmm. I think that core banking business has a lot of headwinds. And so let's talk about whether or not the consumer is the headwind, Bob. You've heard executives, not just from Bank of America this morning, but really over the last several days, talking about a resilient consumer, a still strong consumer. Yeah. Is it so much cautious optimism or over-optimism? Well, listen, one of the most positive things um, is you look forward, and I know there's been a lot of talk on, on the show today about the potential for recession. One of the real positives for our economy is that the balance sheet of both consumers and businesses, I don't ever remember a period where both of them were, were this strong. On the other hand, it's quite clear that, um, you know, we have been easing monetary policy into a recovered and recovering economy. We still have Fed funds below 50 basis points, yet we have a balance sheet at the Fed that's expanded from $4 trillion to $9 trillion, um, you know, during the last two years. So the Fed's clearly behind the curve. The Fed's clearly going to have to increase rates, I think, faster and further than the market even now is anticipating. So you have that versus the very, very strong balance sheets of consumers and businesses. And listen, the economy is not gonna, you're not gonna slow down on, on, its, on its own. So mm -hmm. I think the Fed is gonna have to put the brakes on a little bit more than we would like. Um, and we'll see how this goes forward. Can they put the brakes on to the extent you think they need to and also execute a soft landing while doing it? Listen, it would have been much better if as inflation got over 2% to 2.5 to 3 to 3.5, Fed funds brought up at that time, that rates were raised at that time, but that wasn't the case. So I do think that there's some risk that they've allowed it to get too far ahead and that the amount that they have to raise uh, rates right now will have an impact in the economy. We'll see. Um, I do think that we're going to see more activity um, I think the way I said it is right. I think I think the Fed is prepared to go a little bit further and a little bit faster than we were anticipating even a month or two ago. All right, Bob, I, obviously one of the things that the Fed is looking at is the labor market, and I want to bring it back to the bank specifically when it comes to labor. You alerted, alluded to it in your first answer, but the competition for talent, how persistent do you think the pressures are going to be on the expense side for that very reason? Listen, uh, Kayla, we have never had 
I think the statistic is right, but I think there's like 11 million job offerings and 6 million unemployed. We've never had a gap like that since we've kind of been recording these numbers. So, you know, the talk about a tight labor market um, and the talk about stable prices is real. You know, the Fed has a dual mandate. Um, it's full employment, but we're well beyond full employment. There's really strains uh, in the labor market. Um, and we have the, the most stability, uh, the least stability in prices in, in probably 40 years. So I think what the, what the banks are facing in terms of the labor market is real. And that's why I think you have to keep a real close eye on the cost line, even in more difficult quarters. Another thing I'd say about this quarter, if you look at J.P. Morgan's numbers, uh, the difference between 14 billion last year this quarter and 8 billion this quarter is almost 100% um, uh, uh, the difference in provisions. Last year, they added 4.5 billion back into income because the credit provisions weren't coming. Um, this year, they took one and a half billion, including some some provisions around Ukraine, and I think we're going to have a much tougher environment going forward around around corporate credit uh, and provisions. And I think that's a that's a swing. If that's correct, and you have pressure on on uh, on on costs because of labor, and I would add in technology and the need to compete mm. with stable coins and digital and everything else going on in that space, I think the challenges for the core banking are real.